I did it. It's done. In a little over three weeks, I managed to take and pass the AWS Associate Developer exam. I made a whole bunch of mistakes along the way, getting up at 4 a.m. in order to take the actual exam. What I want to do in this video is take you through some tips, tricks, the courses that I took, the practice questions that I answered, and how I did everything. Be sure to stay to the end as well, because I asked some folks on social media for any questions they had. But stick around, I want to take you through everything that I learned so you can avoid the mistakes that I made and hopefully pass the exam yourself with confidence. Okay, so the story starts on January 4th, and that's when I booked my exam. Now, I like to do this, especially with certifications, is get something in the calendar, get a date set, so you have something to work against. And that's what I did. I set it for about three and a half weeks at the end of January. Nowadays, booking those exams is super easy. You can take it from the comfort of your own home. I took it from my desk right here in the morning just before work. I started by booking myself first onto a video course. Now, there's lots of different choice out there. You can go with something like a membership platform like A Cloud Guru or Cloud Academy, but there are also independent creators as well. So you've got Adrian Cantrell, you've got Stefan Marie. We've even got Andrew Brown who runs a platform called Exam Pro. But I wanted to go with an independent creator, which is why I went with Andrew Brown's course on Exam Pro. The reason that I did that is also because Andrew is super active in the community, always on Twitter and on platforms like Dev2. So the most consistent time for me to watch this type of content is in the morning before work. So I did about two to three hours across the different work days between January the 4th and January the 28th. I think that adds up to about 20 to 30 hours spent watching the actual video content. So when I study, I like to have a few things open. On one side of my monitor, I like to have the actual video course itself, but on the other side, I'd like to have my exam notes, which I will link in the description. The reason that I can share them with you is also because I store them in Markdown in GitHub, and I actually do that editing myself in VS Code on my machine. So when it comes to my notes, I like to structure them by service. So I'll have a different note section for each different AWS service. Alongside that, though, I'll also have a link to the documentation. Now, it's one of those things that I think is overlooked so much, but make sure to utilize the docs when you're doing your revision, because it's often the most up-to-date source of information. And it's not just me that believes in the power of documentation when it comes to learning AWS. The creator of the Cloud Resume Challenge, Forrest Brazil, also has an article out called The Career Changing Habit of Reading the Docs and basically let that be the answer about why I'm just so fanatical about the documentation itself in AWS as a source for your learning. I'll link it in the description box so you can go and check that out as well. So I also like to keep a tally of the remaining days that are up until the exam and a link to the exam guide. Every couple of days I would actually check out the exam guide again and just see if my revision was going in the right direction. There is a bit of a hidden gem of documentation inside AWS certifications. It's in this certification prep page and if you go in there there's a drop down you can select your individual exam. When you go through it basically gives you a summary. It gives you the exam guide, the white papers that you need to read, links off to the FAQs, and all of the different documentation that's going to help you pass the exam. It's kind of buried in the AWS doc, but you absolutely must find this link and bookmark it. One habit that I've got into over time that I find is really useful, I actually make a list of practical exercises that I want to do. Then in a separate session when I am not necessarily watching the videos or taking notes, you can just grab an item off of that list and jump in and get hands on. Now, one thing that I like to do is also keep a tab in my browser for the A Cloud Guru Playground. The Playground itself comes as part of A Cloud Guru's membership in terms of its top tier, which I think is about $40. Now, I find it really useful. I use it for all of my sort of manual experimentation and hands-on work. The reason that I do that is because it's ephemeral. So it lasts for about, I think, four to six hours. And at the end of those six hours, the entire account is erased and all of the services are removed. So then I'm never going to get some nasty bill. And I can also use it to log into all of the different cloud providers. Now, of course, that's a nicety. You don't need to do that. You can set up your own AWS account if you want in order to experiment. However, just be sure to make sure that you can delete all of those different resources in your account. There are some tools out there as well, things like Cloud Nuke that can also help you to clean up your account. Now, I would like to do an end-to-end -end review of Xampro platform in its entirety. However, I did want to share with you just a few features that I was really enjoying when I was going through this revision. One thing that really frustrates me about some of the different membership platforms is just how overcomplicated they've become. They've stuffed all sorts of different features in there from news to all these random different videos and career paths. And sometimes all of this noise kind of gets in the way of the actual learning process. I feel like when you're trying to do learning, one of the main things that you need to cultivate is focus. And the Exam Pro platform actually did that in a really neat way because it's not overwhelming with a whole bunch of different things. It's very simple, very clean, and very focused to the thing that you're trying to do, which is pass that AWS exam. Now, if you go in and actually click on the certification course that you're taking, you will get a bar at the top that has a percentage completion and also a breakdown of every different module and all of the different flashcards that you've completed and things like that. I found that to be super useful because that was driving how I knew how far I was getting through the video courses and if I was ahead of time or behind schedule. Now, when I'm learning, I actually usually create flashcards myself. It's something that I did all throughout 
throughout my time at university and I continue to do it. As you do each module, you unlock more flashcards. You can also revisit your whole set of current flashcards. Depending on the different option, the flashcards will be presented to you more often. Another nice feature is the cheat sheets. So he'll go through a whole bunch of different things as throughout the videos, but then we'll create a bulleted list cheat sheet that is then attached to each different module. And then there's also a master cheat sheet, which basically has everything from all the different modules all grouped together. That was super useful, especially when it came to sort of cramming before the exam itself, because I could go back through and just look at the main points rather than being overwhelmed by all the different aspects that I needed to remember. Now, I watch all of these training videos on two times speed. However, that said, Andrew is always really thorough and very to the point and very quick. Now, with three days to go, I started to change up my strategy. I didn't have much time to go and explore some of the other services, so I started to go back over the services that I didn't understand well and recap them. For me, that was things like the networking services like VPCs, subnets, NAT gateways, that kind of thing. I haven't been through that stuff in quite a while, so I wanted to give myself another refresher as well. With just one day to go, I also then pivoted my strategy again. And by that time, I had watched about 45% of the content. Now, with only one day to go, I decided as well to start focusing on doing some practice exams. Whilst the Exam Pro platform did come with some practice questions for the exam, I did want to go ahead and buy John Bonso's practice exams because I'd heard so much about them from the community, people really speaking very highly of them. So I went to Udemy and bought a pack of the practice questions for the AWS Associate Developer exam. That cost me about $19 for that course on Udemy. But actually, here is where I made the biggest mistake. So this is one day before the exam and I started working myself up into a frenzy because some of these practice questions were incredibly hard. I thought the John Bonso practice exams were just sort of, you know, you've got a pack of questions and a bunch of answers. But actually the practice questions are more like a course themselves rather than just practice questions. What I mean by that is every time for every question, John will actually explain not just what the right answer was, but he'll explain why that was the right answer. And he'll also give you a bunch of links to documentation. But he doesn't just do that for the right answer. He also does it for all of the wrong answers as well, which I thought this was amazing. However, I just didn't simply have time to go through all of this. In the end, I actually only went through one of the different practice exams and it was actually four in the pack. So what I would say is rather than leaving two hours to do one of these practice exams, I would probably leave more like 10 to 15 hours so that you can really dig into some of the answers here, really get some of the value. And this is where things started to fall apart a little bit because I booked it at 7 a.m. because I thought taking it before work would make sense. But now in hindsight, maybe for future exams, I'll actually take the entire day off work and book it maybe later in the afternoon, which gives me time to do some of that revision before the exam itself. Actually, before I get on to what happened on the exam day, if you are enjoying this video, if you're getting any value out of the work that I'm doing, I would really appreciate if you could like this video or even share it on social media so that other people can find the channel and open up the cloud. So there I was getting up at 4 a.m. to do some more additional practice questions. Setting up for the exam itself, especially if you're doing it from home, is quite easy. You just need to clear down your work surface. You'll also have to take some pictures beforehand just to show what your actual room looks like. Now, I've heard also that sometimes during the exams, the proctors might ask you to move the camera around, especially if they hear noise or they see you move moving in a sort of weird way. However, that didn't happen to me in this particular exam. Another thing that you're not allowed to do, which I found kind of weird, is you're not allowed to talk out loud. That was quite hard for me to prevent myself from actually reading the question out loud because I was so tired. I had to read it about four or five times before it was actually sinking in what the question was even asking me. Now, for the associate exam, you have about two hours to do it. Now, in reality, you only need about an hour, maybe 45 minutes to answer all the questions if you fly through them quite quickly. Now, you also have the option as you go through to flag questions to come back to them. Actually, I would suggest that you don't do that. What I think is easier is just to go through every question. If there's a question you can't answer, just skip it. And then when you get to the end, just do a full review. Go right back to question one and work all the way back through. And when you get to the end of the exam, you'll actually find out live time whether you've passed or failed. Now, despite the fact that I had got up at 4 a.m., I had three hours of sleep, I had revised only for three and a half weeks, I had done 45% of the course, and I'd only taken one practice exam out of the four, I did manage to pass at the end of this and passed also with 828 points, and the pass grade is 720. I just can't really tell you how happy I was to see that I had passed that. I think a lot of the success came down to the sort of last minute preparation that I did and making sure that I focused on the things that I didn't know very well. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything related to the exam. However, I did ask on social media if anyone had any questions that they wanted me to answer in this video. So I'm going to go through some of those right now. Now, a common question that I get asked a lot is how long did it take? Now, we've talked about this as well earlier on in the video. It took me around 20 hours over the course of three and a half weeks. Now, I've been working with AWS for nearly eight years now. So a lot of these different services I already had a deep understanding of. Let's say if you're a beginner and you're going for this course, I would probably recommend that you take at least two to three months and have some real dedicated solid time in that in order to be able to pass this exam. Now, another question that I get asked a lot as well is how much did it cost? The 
exam pro course itself was $24. To sit the exam itself was $150. And the Udemy practice exams from John Bonso were $19. So that came to a grand total of about $189 all in. Do you accept? Cash. However, the thing is you don't necessarily need to purchase anything. There's a whole bunch of free content that exists online. Don't feel pressured necessarily to pay anything whatsoever. Now, another question people asked me as well was, do I have any general advice? I think one of the keys to me passing this exam was actually having a ton of hands-on learning throughout my time of building with AWS. What I would probably suggest that you do is start to build a series of mini projects. I think looking at the curriculum, you've probably got about three different mini projects that if you created, you would touch a lot of the main services that are covered in the exam. First one is to build a serverless architecture. So I would build a Lambda function, connect it to DymoDB, deploy it with AWS SAM, attach an API gateway, monitor it with CloudWatch, uh, try even triggering that Lambda with CloudWatch alarms, and generally just experiment some of the other serverless services there. Integrate EventBridge or maybe even step functions as well and start to get familiar with serverless architectures as a whole. The second mini project that I would recommend is to build what I would say is more of a classic architecture. So I would deploy something on EC2, I would add load balancers, add Route 53 routing to that, and also again, monitor that with CloudWatch or maybe even deploy that as well with Cloud formation. And the final kind of mini project that I would suggest that you make is a static site. So deploy some assets into S3, host that with CloudFront as a CDN and hook up a Route 53 entry and build a sort of static website. If you build those three mini projects, I think you'll have a really good grounding in order to pass the exam. A lot of the questions consolidated different services together. So it's not good enough to necessarily know how the services work in isolation. Be sure to stick around. My plan is one big video per month where I'm going to go and take a different exam. Now I asked you folks on social media what you'd want to see me do next and everyone voted for the CKA exam which is the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. Be sure to stick around, subscribe to the channel and I'll hopefully see you soon.